Coelophanta is a genus of large land snail, endemic to Aotearoa, New Zealand. Currently, the genus can be divided into 16 species. Within these 16 species are 57 subspecies spread all over the country. The main concentration of Poelophanta are in the rainy native forests of North Westland, North West Nelson and the Marlborough Sounds. More scattered populations can be found in Fiordland, Kapiti and the central North Island. There's no widely used name for Poelophanta in Te Reo, although certain names such as Kauri Snail and Pupurangi are used for specific species. Poelophanta were named to recognise the work of scientist Dr. A. W. B. Powell in the early 20th century. Poelophanta are famous for being carnivorous, with their favourite food being earthworms. Once they've eaten a tasty worm, they will sit and digest it over a week or two, meaning they don't move around very far or very fast. With a lifespan of up to 20 years, the shell of the largest of these nocturnal hermaphrodites can be over nine centimeters wide, and they can weigh as much as 90 grams. Poelophanta's habitat is in the moist leaf litter in the undergrowth of forests. Populations tend to be found along mountain ranges, although they've also been found lower down in valleys, possibly washed down by rivers. They're not like your garden snail at all, which was introduced from Europe, which eats your cabbages. These are long-lived, slow-growing. To do anything, they've got to get out of the shell, which means they're very susceptible to um, moisture loss. And I guess that's what's been difficult for them in our changed environment in New Zealand, that the forests have got very dry because we've introduced all these habitat modifiers like possums and deer and goats and pigs, which dry out the forest floor. Of particular interest to the people of Nelson is the subspecies Hochstetterai consabrina, which lives in the hills around the city. Hochstetterai consabrina had its threat level recently upgraded to nationally critical, the highest threat level an animal can be given. Something had to be done to retain the species. Since its conception, it was the aim of the Brook Waimarama Sanctuary to home a population of Poelophanta. The Brook Waimarama Sanctuary is 700 hectares of regenerating bush on the outskirts of Nelson City. The sanctuary is an ecological island, a protected and predator-free refuge for fauna and flora. In recent years, Kakariki Karaka and Teeke have been released into the sanctuary. And now, with a suitable leaf litter being established on the forest floor, the dream of introducing Poelophanta could now become a reality. We're quite lucky that we can provide this habitat because um, you have to remember the Brook Waimarama Sanctuary has got the highest altitude gradient of any of the fence sanctuaries in New Zealand. And it was quite clear that we were in the middle of a remnant struggling population, which clearly meant that the Brook Sanctuary is worth a try. Consent to gather the snails for the relocation was gained from the Department of Conservation and local iwi, with three sites in the forest bordering the sanctuary being identified as having remnant populations. So one of the sites is um, in the Maitai Valley and it is on land owned by Ngāti Kuata and the production forest on their land is managed by Tasman Pine Forest. And then we've got two other sites. One is in Mount Richmond Forest Park and another site is here just behind us in the roading catchment. Consent was given to gather 15 snails from each location. We went um, first to the Tasman Forest site in the Maitai Valley. While we expected to take a whole day to collect these 15 animals, we actually found them within an hour and we just found a hotspot and collected 15. With the first 15 snails collected, it was time to move on to the second site near the Rodding River. But rather than taking just a couple of hours, the snails proved much more elusive, with it taking several trips in some rough terrain to fulfill the compliment. The group also make an unwelcome but telling discovery. We came across a lot of recently killed snails um, and it was quite shocking actually for, for going there for the first time and seeing all these empty shells littered on the ground. Despite finding so many empty shells, 
The next 15 snails were collected from the rotting site, and it was time to make the first of two historic releases in the sanctuary. Representatives from local iwi, staff from the Department of Conservation, and the Brook Waimarama Sanctuary, as well as a group of local school children, trekked into the sanctuary hilltops to introduce the snails to their new home. It's not like you open a cage and a kiwi walks out, or you open a cage and lots of birds fly out. It was just like, it is your turn, open the um, ice cream container, pick one snail, place it where the stake is, and go back to your trek. And we repeated that 30 times. With the first batch successfully relocated, there was little time to dwell on the significance of the moment, but instead once again head for the hills and collect the remaining 15. We sent an expedition team up to Rock's Hut. It spent two nights at Rock's Hut. Unfortunately, they again came across lots of predated snail shells. Over three days, only found nine individuals. The shock of finding a high level of predation in the final two collections highlighted the importance of rehoming the snails. But even though the numbers were lower than desired, the relocation was still a success. The plan is to wait five years and then go into the release area and do a little survey there and count how many small snails we can find. While the snails are hidden away in the hills, they're now safe. Safe in a sanctuary, increasingly proving how special it is.